bricklaying resource where I made some bricks, four bricks, half bricks, quarter bricks and three quarter bricks <coughs> on elevation and I made them again on plan for bonding reasons as I'll show you. For instance, you can move, you can click, pick a brick up and show a planned view of uh, bonding, brickwork, um, so a student can understand how we bond. Um, I can also build on top of that brick by bringing the brick to the front and actually bring the brickwork out and show how the different layers work. Um, and I can, I can show normal brickwork on elevation and bonding brickwork um, I have a level I can drag in to upright and I have a gauge rod to check the heights of my courses um, just as if you would as you should do brick laying um, in real life. I think the students um, really relate to it because of how they've grown up in this day and age with computers. It's second nature, it's something they understand. So I think it's made it easier for them to, to learn how to lay bricks. It's easy, it's great teaching uh, tool um, because you can basically you've got, you've got hundreds and hundreds of bricks in the classroom with a level and a gauge rod and a string line and you can, you can um, do anything on the computer, basically what you can do in the brick workshop. From that, um, we can build brick walls just as if you could do it in the workshop. Um, I introduced the string line. So you can build your corners, um, bring in your string line just as if you would in real life, adjust it to the size you want, and then you can get the students to run bricks to a line as if they were building a wall um, within, within the workshop. Um, well, the motivation for uh, setting up um, the virtual brick lane resource was really. Um, part of an action research project um, for my certificate of education and partly um, to create a more active um, classroom in a theory lesson for Brickland students. I introduced was cavity wall construction where I've got a kit that basically a cross section of a cavity wall. Um, the bricks are in course to three this time to make it easier for the student. I've got uh, bricks um, and blocks. Um, damp course you, you can use to show the students how to put on damp course, um, wall ties. Brickland students are, they prefer practical um, side of the subject basically, why they, they want to do Brickland because they prefer to learn um, and, and to do uh, practical things. Um, so it's very difficult especially in their first year to actually engage level one brickland students in theory um, sort of lessons some less able students um, spell things wrong and um, and the drawings aren't that great especially for if they have to um, revert back to them for revision purposes um, whereas you know you've actually given them the tools on the computer screen to use and they, they can use it and print it out and that's something that they are I think they prefer a mouse in the hand more than they do a pen. Yeah, the long-term uh, impact for this resource is we'll be looking to share the inspiration that Chris has produced through uh, using this computer medium. The students, he's clearly picked up on what students like to do and his students like to do. Whereas before, maybe they were using more conventional, traditional ways of teaching, he has identified that there are other ways of doing it. And he's found that this way is very appropriate for his type of students. Now, as us as Cultural Institute, what we want to do is to share that out through, uh, through all our campuses and so that all staff can see that there has been a, another way of doing something which has been done traditionally in one way. And therefore to allow them to brainstorm and think, is there another way that I'm doing something right now? Mm. Because if you can match your learn, the learning styles of the students and the teaching styles of the teachers closer, the chances are that retention and achievement and enjoyment, which are all wrapped together, will improve.